Welcome to the Ordinary Guy Garage. I'm Scott, just an ordinary guy. Hey, and today we are gonna work on the S10. I'm gonna put that evac system in, that Moroso evac. So anyways, hang tight. All right, so I figured I'd go over this again. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what an evac system is, um, what it does is it, it releases or it, it evacuates uh, crankcase pressure inside of your engine. So when you're, especially at high RPM, if you got a high RPM going, you're, you're creating a lot of pressure in there and it needs to go somewhere. So usually like on a factory motor, stock motor type thing or street motor, you run a PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation. So what that does is it takes the, uh, it ventilates the crankcase. And that'll run right back through your, your uh, carburetor, through the manifold, back through the engine, and goes back out and kind of keeps it somewhat of a loop, I guess, going. But anyways, uh, for racing, you don't, you don't really want to introduce those gases in through that way, and, and you want to use a different system. The ultimate system to use for something like this is a vacuum pump with a catch can. And what that does is it... it connects to here, you know, bolts on there like an alternator would, but what it is, it's a vacuum pump and it belt driven and it pulls the vacuum or creates a vacuum, pulls those gases out and whatever little bits of oil and whatever in the fog that it pulls out from the crankcase will get into that catch can. So only, only problem for me is I, I, I want to use that system, but for right now, this is what I'm going to use because it's those are, are kind of pricey, and you know. So for right now, I'm going to use this crank, uh, the Moroso evac system. So what the what the Moroso system does is you have these these breathers that go right here on the um, on the valve cover, and you run a hose off of this. It goes down to this piece here which gets welded into your header collector and you can see the bottom of it right there it goes in at a 45 so your header will be like like so I guess welded right in there and then that hose that comes off of here goes right to here so as your exhaust is flowing through it creates a vacuum and it pulls gases out now I had uh, somebody bring up a comment on when I in, was, was talking about this on another video about uh, oiling down the track and getting oil on your back tires and 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 that is a it is a concern. Um, they've been using these for years and years, and uh, you know, and that's definitely something I'm going to keep my my eye on to make sure that I'm not not getting any blow by from it. So, um, and that's actually one of the things that an evac system does is it helps to eliminate a lot of the blow by that you would get in your engine by relieving some of that pressure but what I'm going to do because I have an exhaust on this truck you're supposed to run this with an open header but I have really open exhaust and I think it'll work okay um, right now I have my tailpipes kind of come out to the side kind of right in front of the back tires so I'm gonna cut those off and move them and then point them in towards each other and I'll we'll, we'll do that too um, I've seen a lot of cars like that that have their their uh, tailpipes underneath the car pointed at each other and I never knew why you know it was like that and I asked a couple of guys that they didn't know so uh, now I'm gonna do that and I know why uh, at least I'm gonna know why I do it so anyways um, let's let's uh, let's uh, take some measurements here and get started you can see according to the instructions this picture up here it shows you that I want to mount the it's actually a check valve that gets mounted into the collector at a 45 degree angle uh, as close to the transition point as possible. Now I believe that they're saying as close to that as possible because this is designed for a head open header system. So I feel like I'm still going to have the same amount of draw down the pipe a little bit than I would right there. So I'm hoping for that. Um, so being that this is an S10 there is not a lot of room back there. I can't mount it here because that's where my wheel turns and you can even see where I get a little bit of rubbing from my tire. So here is not a good spot. Over here, not a good spot. And it's 
So my best, I, my best location is right here. So when I add this to it like that, I can, I think I can make it work. Only problem is I have an O2 sensor for my wideband. So I don't really want to have the evac system uh, entering the exhaust system before upstream of the O2 sensor because I don't want to get bad readings. So that's my dilemma, but I think it'll be all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, still be able to get it at a 45. It's kind of dark in here, but you can see I kind of tucked my pipe down and around and I'm going to put this guy right in there like that. So it'll be kind of tucked in. It'll be tucked in like that. Something very similar to that. I'll be able to get a free, oh, sorry about the arm. I'll be able to get a free, uh, the hose can, can go in there freely without any kinks. Probably have to make a little thing in here to tie it up or something. But that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll do the same thing on the other side so they match. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it marked and pull this header off and uh, drill it out. All right, it's a really tight area. Hard to see in here what's going on. But what I did was I took and I set it in here where I want it to go. And then I, I uh, put a little bit of a Sharpie mark around the outside to get me in the ballpark right there. So, and I can see a little better. So what I'm gonna do now is drill a hole, drill a hole in there and then, and then make the pipe fit in there. So, hold on. Well, the instructions said to drill a 7 8 hole right here. So I was overthinking it about this, thinking, well, I need to make an oblong hole so this will sit in there. But then I started thinking, well, it, it doesn't have to be that hard. So what I did is I just took a couple of scraps that I had of pipe and put it on there to extend it some, put it in the hole. And I know the angle I want it to be at. So once that's in the hole, I just bend it to fit so now I'll put the header back bolt it back on and see how it sits in there alrighty took a little bit of tweaking around you can kind of see the holes got a little bit of a little bit of a bend to it now I got that in there where I want it to go and I'm just gonna tack weld it in place pull the header off weld it up and we should be good to go connected to the breathers and on over here on the driver's side that has the most stuff I got it tied back I got a uh, I got this wire anchored to the firewall right here this set of wires right here that set of wires right there anchored to the firewall and so I just zip tied the hose to there zip tied in the connection for the O2 sensor and there we are all tucked in so hopefully that'll all work. And the other side, the other side over here, I'm probably gonna tie it back to the dipstick there just to get a little bit of clearance. Not sure yet. I still have to work on the dipstick some. So I'm not even sure if it's gonna stay in exactly that spot. And then down below here, again, that one's tucked in. Enough clearance for the tire and all. So pretty happy with it. All right, well, that's gonna do it. Um, that, that'll wrap it up. But I won't, obviously, I'm not gonna know how it works until I get the engine running or get it on the track or any of that stuff. Hopefully I'll have the engine going here pretty soon. I'll, I'll be able to fire it up.
Got a couple more little things to do. Uh, the old alternator didn't fit with the new bracket, um, so I, I ordered a new alternator, so I'm waiting on that. Um, and then I found out that the alternator isn't gonna work with the radiator hose in the new location, so I'm gonna have to work my way through that puzzle too. Um, now the exhaust, I said earlier that I'd get the exhaust, I was gonna uh, correct it where it points into the front of the rear tires. Um, and it's not just because of the evac, but if I had engine failure, you know, on the track and it blew oil out, you know, drop a valve or something like that, um, you know, I, I, I'd have oil all over my tires no matter what. So to me, it was a safety issue anyways. But I'm gonna be pulling the rear end out of this truck. And when I pull the rear end out, um, I'll be back there and I could do all that and, and you know do my exhaust and, and correct that and then you know, the other problem with the exhaust is it, it rubs when I go in and out of the the trailer with it so either way it needed to be fixed so I'll be getting into that here uh, in the next couple of days so there we have it uh, thanks for watching thanks for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble on and watching me fumble tools <laughs> so uh, welcome to the new subscribers if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it. Got nothing to lose, uh, but about 10 or 15 minutes of your time. And uh, uh, I think that's about it. Stay safe.